moving on to placenta and parturition so what do you mean by the term placenta so it is a temporary organ that is found only in eutherian or placental mammals during the time of gestation so you know that it is a physiological and anatomical connection between the developing fetus and the mother human placenta see here you have to remember the different terms which we use to describe the human placenta metadiscoidal it is restricted to a disc like zone on the chorion so by now you know the meaning of chorion hemochorial because the chorionic villi of the fetal placenta is literally bathed in the maternal blood sinuses that's why it is called hemochorial and what do you mean by deciduate term so deciduate means that during childbirth a part of the mother's uterine tissue is also coming out along with the unplugged placenta so remember these three terms regarding the human placenta it is a reddish brown disc and it has a very important structure can you recall where the umbilical cord comes from it comes from the allantois isn't it so placenta has a connection with the umbilical cord allantois forms the umbilical cord along with so there are two arteries and two veins that are present inside the umbilical cord but only one vein survives because one of the veins that is the right vein disappears by the month what is the umbilical cord so here we have the diagram showing the fetus and the placenta you can see the vasculature of the umbilical cord now this red tube that you can see is a vein why am i calling it a vein because notice that the blood is being carried towards the heart of the fetus and then can you see the blue colored structure the blue colored structures are the arteries they are carrying blood towards the placenta and away from the heart of the fetus so there is a presence of just now we discussed that a single umbilical artery is associated with congenital abnormalities so how many arteries did we see in the previous picture we saw two arteries and one vein isn't it but in congenital abnormalities you will find only a single umbilical artery both the umbilical arteries and veins are surrounded by so remember this term a tissue called the wartens jelly which is nothing but connective tissue and it is rich in hyaluronic acid the position of the umbilical cord so how do you know where the umbilical cord is located in the fetus that is demarcated externally by you all know the navel or the belly button which is technically called the umbilicus what is the role of placenta helps in nutrition digestion respiration or exchange of gases excretion it also acts as a fetal liver so helps in storage and as a barrier and most importantly as an endocrine organ why do we call it an endocrine organ see the different hormones that it secretes estrogen progesterone hcg hcs what is hcg human chorionic gonadotropin we have discussed this in the past HCS stands for somatomammotropin or which is now called human placental lactogen and other hormones like chorionic thyrotropin corticotropin and relaxin so we discussed about so many hormones let us see the function of some of these hormones for example you have hcg it stimulates and maintains remember it prolongs the life of corpus luteum so that there is a continuous supply of progesterone till the end of pregnancy what about hcs you remember that it is called human placental lactogen so lactogen means obviously it acts on the mammary gland stimulating the process of lactation what about relaxin if you recall relaxin is a hormone also secreted in the ovary okay along with that the placenta also secretes which helps in softening the connective tissue of the pelvic region the pubic symphysis of the mother so that the fetus can undergo parturition what is parturition yes childbirth so it can undergo birth easily so moving on to what i already described parturition so the common term is childbirth so gestation is completed in humans in about 266 days from the time of mother's last menstruation so remember this point a fully formed fetus so i already told you that parturition is childbirth what initiates parturition so it is ideally the fully formed fetus also the placenta okay so this produces a lot of hormones which is sent into the mother's blood and it increases the secretion of the birth hormone very important point so oxytocin is called the birth hormone because it promotes the uterine contraction 
which is called the labor. And then we already discussed about relaxin, which helps in increasing the flexibility of pubic symphysis and the ligaments surrounding the uterus. So these are some of the hormones, placental hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone. And it is seen that this hormone increases in the blood of the mother when she is closing towards parturition or at the end of gestation. So it is very important. It is said to be important in the timing of birth. How did they know that? Because it increases dramatically towards the end of pregnancy, point one. And then uh, women with high CRH levels, they are more prone to deliver the baby prematurely, indicating that CRH is directly connected to timing of birth. What are the stages of parturition? Stage of dilation. Remember the time point, 6 to 12 hours. It lasts for 6 to 12 hours, during which, very important, there's dilation of the cervix. And then the amniotic fluid is sent out or released through the vagina. So that's when the mother knows that she might be entering into the stage of labor pains. Oxytocin causes vigorous uterine contraction. So this stage is called the stage of dilation. The second stage of parturition is the stage of expulsion. See, the name only indicates that the baby is pushed out of the vagina and in most of the cases, the head comes out first. And this lasts for how many minutes? Just about 20 minutes. And the umbilical cord, so the doctors will clip the umbilical cord once they identify that the baby is breathing normally. The last stage of parturition is the placental stage, which lasts for a very small time, that is 10 to 15 minutes. So obviously this happens after the child has come out of the mother's womb. What happens now? Now inside the womb, we still have the placenta. So that is now expelled by the powerful contractions of the uterus. And remember that placenta along with the umbilical cord is called the afterbirth. So that is given out. And then finally the umbilical cord is cut very close to the baby's navel and the newborn skin. So if you've seen a newborn baby, the skin is not brown. It is bluish pink. Why? Because it takes a while for the pigment to be synthesized, for the melanin pigments to be synthesized in the skin following the exposure to sunlight. So here you have a picture depicting the different stages of parturition. So here you can see the first stage, that is the dilation stage. This is the cervical area of the mother's reproductive tract. It starts dilating. You can see the diameter is increasing. Now this is the second stage, the expulsion stage. Can you see the head of the baby is coming out of the vagina, isn't it? So the first one to come out, the first part of the body to come out is the head. And the last stage here is where there is expulsion of the placenta. See, this is the placenta and this is the umbilical cord. And what did we call this? This is the placental stage. And I told you that the placenta and the umbilical cord gets unplugged from the uterine endometrium along with a little bit of the uterine tissue and this together constitutes the afterbirth. So these are the three important stages of parturition.